Hello and welcome to video 25. In this problem we have an elastic collision between two masses and they're going to collide and go in two different directions. So this is a two-dimensional problem. It's not a simple linear collision. We have a bigger mass and we have a smaller mass. So if you read through this problem, here we have an M1 that has a mass that is 10 kilograms and you're given an M2 which you're told is 5 kilograms the second mass is at rest to begin with this first mass initially is traveling to the right at 20 meters per second after the collision they're going to separate in two directions and what directions those are depend uh, partially on how much energy is lost but we're not going to worry about that here I did make sure that this one works out in terms of energy being conserved but energy is not conserved in all collisions. What is conserved, and what you need to know to do this problem, however, is momentum. Momentum is conserved in all problems where there's no external forces. So for this system of two particles, the momentum is going to be conserved. But being in two dimensions, we're going to have to look at the x and the y directions separately. So this, I like to use a prime. Basically, it's an apostrophe to designate after. So we have V1 prime, we have V2 prime, and they're going to make two angles that aren't usually and certainly aren't necessarily the same. So I'm going to call this one theta1 one, and this one theta2. Some people would put a prime after it, but because there's no angle before, I'm just going to call them theta1 and theta2 and make the algebra just a little bit uh, easier. Now, if you've seen any of these videos before you know I kinda like to use X components in blue and red components for Y just because I don't want you to mix them up and I have the silly expression don't make purple so you just want to have it straight whether you're talking about the X direction or the Y direction so let's start with the Y direction first and for Y I like to use blue I don't know maybe it's because it reminds me of the sky it's a good color and when you look in the Y direction it's going to be, so I've been corrected, uh, blue I'm going to use for Y, despite what I may have said earlier, and red I'm going to use for X. So we're going to use blue for the Y. No matter whether you're doing the Y direction or the X direction, the key concept is that the momentum before of the system has to equal the momentum after of the system. Now, in the y direction it's really simple because the momentum in the y is zero it's not moving up or down it's only moving left or right so the momentum is just zero after the collision however we have two objects to consider so you've got object one by the way we were given these numbers the velocity one after is ten meters per second and that angle one is eighteen degrees is going to equal this the first object which has a positive y component with a magnitude that's going to be equal to m1 times v1 prime the velocity of object 1 after the collision times the sine of theta 1 remember the y components use sine this is positive so I'm going to leave it as positive the second object we're going to subtract that y component because that goes down which means when these add up they should add up to zero so here the momentum of object 2 after the collision is m2 times you know remembering of course that p equals mv m2 times v2 prime times sine of theta 2 and we're going to uh, hang on to that and just leave that on the side we're gonna come back to that soon enough actually let me take one more step and bring this over here uh, m1 v1 prime sine of theta 1 and that will bring this over equals m2 v2 prime sine of theta 2 and we will come back to that in a few minutes but now let's jump over to the red side and look at the x components of momentum now here it's not zero you have the momentum of this first object is the momentum of the whole system so for that we're gonna have m1 v1 notice no prime and I'm not gonna bother 
writing x or y next to it because all of this velocity is in the x direction. So you have the momentum of the system before, m1, v1, and that's going to equal the x component of the momentum of the first object afterwards. So that'll be m1 times v1 prime times the cosine of theta1. Again, cosine because it's the x component of this velocity. Plus, notice they're both to the right, so they're both plus this time. m2 v2 prime cosine of theta2, which is what we want to know. Notice at this point there are two variables we don't know. We don't know v2 prime and we don't know theta2. So what we have is a situation that comes up pretty often where we have two variables, two things we don't know, and we have two equations. So when you have two equations and two unknowns, it is possible generally to get uh, the values of those two variables. So let's do just a little bit of uh, rearranging here. And I'm going to solve this for v2 prime. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for this and I'll then plug v2 prime into this which will allow me to get theta 2, the other unknown. I joke around in class, I like to call this getting rid of a variable, making it disappear, not in the mafia way, but the point is you're taking an equation where you have two unknowns and you're solving for one of those unknowns in terms of the other unknown. So you're basically getting it down to one variable and then you can solve an equation when there's only one unknown. So let's bring this over and solve for v2 prime. So m1 v1 minus this stuff m1 v1 prime cosine theta 1 is going to equal m2 v2 prime cosine theta 2 and then what I want to do is I want to divide the m2 cosine theta 2 so I get this by itself so I'm gonna cheat I'm gonna copy with my magic pen that identical thing there and then I'm just going to divide by m2 cosine theta 2. And that's going to equal v2 prime. And you may say, well, okay, what's so useful about that? Well, remember this stuff over here? We're going to take this v2 prime and we're going to plug it in there because all of this stuff is equivalent to v2. Anywhere I see v2 prime over here I can put in this stuff. That's what the equal sign means. They're equivalent. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to substitute this in and I realize that initially it's a little bit of a, a mouthful of algebra but let's go ahead and uh, write that anyway. So the left side so far doesn't change. M1 V1 prime sine of theta 1 equals. I'm going to bring this over here. I'm going to write this as M2 sine of theta 2. And then for this V2 prime, I'm going to put in all of this stuff. So you're going to get M1 V1 minus M1 V1 prime cosine theta 1 over M2 cosine theta 2. So those are equivalent. Now I can take this, let's use purple, it's a good color, I can take this m2 and cross it out with that and then when I bring this over here you'll see sine over cosine gives you tangent and then I'm going to divide this over so I'm saving us a step and doing this all at once and what you get is m1 v1 prime sine of theta 1 over this top stuff m1 v1 minus m1 v1 prime cosine theta 1 equals tangent of theta or theta is going to equal the inverse tangent of this stuff so let's go ahead and plug in the numbers so we have 10 kilograms times v1 prime is 10 meters per second times the sine of theta 1 which we were given is 18 degrees 
By the way, public service announcement, make sure your calculator is in degree mode, not radian mode. And then M1 is still 10 kilograms. Times V1, which was the velocity in the beginning, notice it doesn't have a prime, which is 20 meters per second, minus M1 is 10 kilograms. Times V1 prime, which again is 10 meters per second, times the cosine of theta1, which was 18 degrees. And when you put all of that in, you should get a theta that is 30.5 degrees. So we have one of the answers. So we have the direction. And you may say, well, how am I supposed to get the other one? Well, remember, we have already solved for V2 prime. We solved for that in terms of this stuff over here. So what I'm actually going to do Let's pick a different color that is visible. Purple is a good color. We're just going to take this and plug this in for theta 2. And that'll give us V2 prime. So if I go ahead and I plug in the numbers, I'll stick with the purple. M1 is 10 kilograms. V1 is 20 meters per second. Minus M1 is 10 kilograms. V1 prime is... Uh, given which was 10 meters per second times the cosine of theta 1 which was 18 degrees over m2 which was 5 kilograms times the cosine of theta 2 which we just found out is 30.5 so that's really what we're putting in again degrees equals v2 prime and when you put all that into your calculator you should get a v2 prime that is 24.3 degrees. So, looking at the problem from the beginning, what we have is a conservation of momentum problem. The momentum of the system before the collision must equal the momentum of the system after the collision. Afterwards, there are four things you can possibly know. The velocity one after, the angle of object one after, the velocity of object 2 after, and the angle of object 2 after. And you need to know two of those four. You can solve for the other two. To answer that kind of question, you have to look at the y component of momentum and the x component separately. For both the y and the x, the momentum before has to equal the momentum after. The way this game works is there are two variables you don't know anytime you get asked this kind of question. You need to have two equations or more, but here we're really dealing with two equations, so you can find those two unknowns. Pick one of those two variables. It really doesn't matter which one, although sometimes the algebra is a little simpler with one than the other. Solve for that variable in terms of things you know and that other variable that you don't know. Then go to the other equation, whichever one you didn't use, and you're going to use that variable that you just solved for. Substitute that in, and you'll be down to one thing we don't know. In this case, we got down to uh, v. We got down to theta two, which is what we didn't know, and we were able to get theta two, 30.5 degrees, and then we plugged it back in to that first equation where we eliminated one of the variables, and we were able to get 24.3 degrees. So again, these problems, it always comes down to the momentum before for the system has to equal the momentum after for the system, even though it's in two dimensions. As always, I hope you find this helpful.